Following on from my GarageBand demo where I spent about half an hour going through most of the features of it, uh, there are a few in-depth things which I'd like to show you. The first is the sampler. Now this is extremely powerful. Um, I've made a video about the Akai S950 sampler and this is a very basic version of it. Essentially it just takes a recording and you can play it back at any pitch and you can do a few other things with it as well. So if I should show you that, so under instruments you go into sampler, there we go, and then you're presented with a page with a start button and an input level meter. So you can check the recording level, at the moment I'm using the internal mic of the iPad, and then a start button which will then allow you to record. So if I just say a phrase for example, GarageBand for iOS. GarageBand for iOS. You can hear there's a bit of reverb on that at the moment, so I'm just going to remove that. GarageBand. GarageBand. GarageBand for iOS. There we go. So, at the end of that sample, you can hear a little click. GarageBand for iOS. That click would have been where I'd hit the iPad to stop it and the internal mic will have picked that up. So you can trim the start and end of this sample. So if I just do this with the yellow box, essentially I've trimmed the end off. GarageBand for iOS. There we go. At the beginning, there might be a little space as well. I can trim the beginning, but it might take the gut of GarageBand away with it. So we just try that. GarageBand, GarageBand, GarageBand for iOS. Yeah, it's just cut it off a little bit. So let's just GarageBand for iOS. GarageBand for iOS. GarageBand for iOS. Note that when I take my finger off the key, the sound continues slightly. GarageBand for there's a bit of a fade on it. You can change that with the shape button here, which gives you a representation of what happens when you take your finger off the key. If I was to move this here to a vertical line, the sound will stop the moment I release the key. Garage, garage, garage band, garage, gar 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 garage band for iOS. There are a few other things on here. We can set the decay as well. So when I play the note on the keyboard, the sound will drop to a certain level. GarageBand for iOS. So there's a, a strong beginning and then it tapers off. You can do so much with this. If I bring the level of that back up. GarageBand for iOS. So if I adjust the beginning as well, I can get the attack to be softer so the sound comes in gradually. GarageBand for iOS. GarageBand for iOS. Now, I have my keyboard here rigged up to this as well via the camera kit that you can buy that's commercially available, which allows me to play all my samples on a keyboard instead. GarageBand for iOS. GarageBand for iOS. GarageBand for, I GarageBand for, I GarageBand for iOS. Note that if you change the pitch of the sample, the speed of it will also change. So, one octave higher, it will take half the time to play that sample. GarageBand for iOS. It's like having a record on the wrong speed. So I'm going to record a new sample, but I'm going to sing a note this time. La. Whoop, I'm going to do that again because it. La. I made a mistake in the middle there. Now, I can actually use that sample because I can loop part of the sample. I can take the the bit that went slightly awry. La. I can get rid of that, like that, La. but note that it cuts off straight away. I can loop the remainder of this sample, so if I just take a loop, La. and then play with the start and end points of that loop, I get a continuous note. La. <laughs> I quite like that. Now I'm just going to take the beginning of that sample La. 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 because I just want to get rid of that initial La. La. 
let's try that with the loop on. Now with the shape, I'm just going to take the attack off very slightly. There we go, so that makes it a bit more of a gentle vocal pad. A powerful instrument. You've got an instrument here that came from very little. So there's the sampler. Now I can fine tune these samples as well. Just in case you need to align it with the rest of the instruments on GarageBand. So course tune at the top, I think is semitones. And you get a little tone that goes with it so that you can, you, the tone that goes underneath the sample. The tone is the uh, the note that you're meant to be tuning to, in this case a C. If I play the C above, you'll hear it a bit more clearly. There we go, that's about right. So I can now play my samples. I can apply modulation with the wheel on here, so it can sound more vibrato-y. There we go, and I can also change the pitch. Just like on a keyboard, and I've got the same controls here. Hugely powerful, hugely. The other thing you could do with this, bear in mind that on one track of GarageBand, you can only have one sample playing. You can't load multi-samples. But if you've got lots of tracks on the iOS 10 and 11 GarageBand, you have 32 tracks. You could make a drum kit out of noises. You could even sample somebody's drum kit instead of using the onboard kits. So you also have a velocity control here. La, 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 la. It's less flexible on an iPad as it would be on a keyboard with actual physical keys. La, 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 la. Note that it plays the same sample. In more advanced applications, you'd have a quiet sample, a medium quiet, a medium, a medium loud, and a loud sample, so that you can actually faithfully reproduce the characteristics of a musical instrument. But this is on a free bit of software. So uh, I'm just going to go back now to my page where I've got my sampler, and I'm going to record something. There we go. So I'm just going to take the metronome off now. And there we go. There's my sound that's recorded. And I'm going to um, add another. Uh, I'm going to do some smart drums, for example. There we go, there it is. Just put some smart drums on like that. That's one thing that I didn't really show on the GarageBand video was how to get this smart drums enabled. You drag your drums into position and then press record and it'll play that line for you. As with all of the instruments on here, you can see the graphical representation of what you've, what you've put in there. So, there we go. Now you can edit the, uh, the drums here uh, by going back into the there we go, into the window there. And you can actually make the, the, uh, the drums a little less complicated by moving them to the left, more complicated to the right, loud and soft. So anything's possible. And there we go, there is the first part on the sampler.